Hello, hello, hello. We are going to do a talk, Beatrice and I, on, on um, the show you just saw on Facebook Live, Black Girl Lingu Linguistic Play. Uh, this is Chloe Davis, company member. We have some people joining in, so we're going to hold off a little bit and uh, wait for Beatrice to join us. Uh, let me know if you all enjoyed the show you saw on Facebook Live. Were you watching? What'd you think? You have some questions? Let us know. Okay, B just joined, so let's... All right, let's see, let's connect. Waiting for Beatrice to join. Hi. How are you? I'm emotional, but I'm good. Ah. After watching, but yes. So I'm over here, like, teary-eyed. No, no. Oh, my gosh. that's Teary-eyed in a good way. In a, in a good way. In a good way, right? Mm -hmm. oh, let's, let me set up my, my cam here. All right, perfect. B, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, we want to welcome all of you all coming over from Facebook to Instagram. Oh, Kat said me too. Um, I'm Chloe Davis. Um, I'm one of the company members. And we also have Beatrice Capote. I'm also one of the company members. And we're here to do um, a Q&A um, on your thoughts about... Uh, what you saw, um, your thought about your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings about the artistry, um, the movement, the language, all of that good stuff. But you right. know, let's just be transparent. I mean, B, you said you're emotional. Can you share with us how you feel the impact of um, what you just saw, but just black girl linguistic play in general? Um, Mm -hmm. it has been with uh, this masterpiece since its inception. And I would love for you to just tell us how you're feeling. Well, first, I just want to give a round of applause to this performance. Mm. Yeah. Just amazing. You know, so like just kudos, you know, because it is a, just such a masterpiece and just to just just to see it mm -hmm. um you know i don't actually watch <laughs> watch the work after um like in video i just like i try not to watch myself I cat and i always talk about how we just don't watch ourselves <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? um and just because you know as a performer you want to always be um just on your toes you always want to create new information new development new everything so so that's the reason why. So this is the first time that I actually watched the full work mm -hmm. and to just also see, you know, especially the duet, you know, the duet, um, just to see it, you know, see, the, see all of the different intricacies, the gestures, all of those different emotions that was created from the very beginning. And just to kind of like see all of that, it's just amazing. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, I just kind of like, um, you know, wrote down just different things like, you know, again, like very emotional, you know, sisterhood, I got your back. Mm -hmm. um, and this sense of like investigating and digesting and development. And there was just so much maturity. And I mean, work, of course, you know, it was, it was, uh, it began, it created in, in August 2014 at the, um, at the yard. And we started there with, of course, just gestures, you know, and, you know, Camille, of course, you know, it's all about research. So she asked us to just Google um, women from the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, it's like all of the different gestures that these women, you know, had, we started to create all those different gestures and then put it all together right so it was kind of like a study right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah and i was saying that that's a major component of camille's work 
um, I was watching it with my, my mom and dad and, um, you know, they understood these gestures and they were like, what, what kind of dance is this? I was like, well, it's social dance, but this is, you know, um, Camille's ideas that are embedded in, you know, black American social dance, African traditional dance and social dance. Um, um, but taking this, this uh, idea of black women what does that mean and the relationships of of that we have whether you know the du second duet is what beatrice and i um usually do together fauna who is the og um also and there's also been maite i want to shout out other people that have done it maite as well as um, malika but that is um, a duet about sisterhood right um an older sister a younger sister um, mm -hmm. their bond, but you know, that development, development you go through as, you know, um, a girl when you're finding yourself, you know, like, what are these? Oh, breasts. What is that? Oh, a butt, an ass, right? Like you're finding yourself and it's like, you know, what does that do to the complexity of your mind? You know, how are you growing up? And then you have your little sister who's watching you, right? Because, you know, we're role models, you know what I mean? You're always, whether you like it or not, you're a role model. And I feel like that was that, uh, you know, the little sister is looking at her big sister because that's her role model. So she wants to do what she does, right? Also, you know, in the first duet uh, with Camille and Kat, shout out to Camille and Kat, holding it down, beautiful. My dad was so uh, thrilled. He was like, oh, oh, they're moving. And I was like, yeah. Um, but that is the story of friendship, right? You know? And friendship can come from all types. Friendship comes can come from your siblings. Friendship can come from your cousins. Friendship can come, you know, because particularly that was, um, Camille talks about that duet, and that was her and um, her cousin, her older cousin, because Camille's the only child. Um, um, but Kat and Camille do that duet. They have been friends since teenagers, you know. Um, so that was this beautiful idea of friendship. Uh-oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but, um yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, they're, it's showing rhythm, showing social dance, it's showing double dutch, you know, name games, all of the, those different things that we used to do, that we did, you know, it's like, right? Double and dutch, mm -hmm. Are things that are like from our ancestors, you know, mm -hmm. like going back to what I was saying in terms of like the research and going back to the 1800s of all these different gestures, but, you know, it's like evolution from, from, like now so that's basically like what you're saying you know in the first duet it's like they're showing all these different also girl codes mm -hmm. and not afraid of showing that not being afraid of you know doing the snap and mm -hmm. like it's not necessarily a stereotype right that is us that is us yeah, yeah. um and uh, celebrating our black joy that's right and it's and it it's ours it belongs to us and you know these are codes and we see it now in mainstream and it has trickled over and been appropriated you know yeah. in other cultures and other people that and we understand that but you know it it has value and meaning and it started with black women you know um i just i really enjoyed this i really really enjoyed this um and shout out to Aaliyah. <laughs> yes who who did it? Um, uh, B wasn't with us then, uh, but I mean, your energy, your spirit was there. And I, you were talking about earlier that you know you got a chance to really sit back and see it. And um, yeah, this is one of the first times that you were you stepped out of the piece, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a, a huge moment. So I'm happy that you got a chance to receive the beauty of the work because it is outstanding. Yeah, I mean it's it's such a masterpiece. I mean, I, I um as I'm as as I was watching, Fauna and I, we were just like texting back and forth and just thinking and we you know, it's one of those things that when you when you continue on doing the work, mm -hmm. you you know, you 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 for, not necessarily forget, but it's like when you actually see it, mm -hmm. then you start to remember all of the different emotions that were put mm -hmm. in you start mm -hmm. Think, think about the different, the, how that did that split in the do in the second duet happen? You mm. know, it's right. like, how did that come come out? And I, that was actually a mistake. A mistake, right? You know, and I'm talking about the rehearsals that happened back in um, August in uh, August of 2014 and the development of the work mm -hmm. and um, 
uh, Maura Mina, uh, yeah. who was also one of okay. the editors, like you said, Fauna, um, of course, Camille and Kat, um, and my, of course, myself, but and, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Usha. <laughs> and Usha, yes, yes, yes. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to go back to like the, the, you know, the people that started and then from there, yeah. you know, open up, right? Um, open up to other people joining and creating another evolution of the work. So, um, but yeah, it's just like dissecting, investigating all of these different things and how yeah. we also relate to each other too as sisters. Mm -hmm. Um, so... So yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things that it's it's so um it's so rhythmical, it's so um uh technique is show. Yeah. You no, know? it's it's all of these different, you know, things that I, I just feel like it's just so beautiful. And one of the things that for me I had to do in rehearsals is, you know, strip my classical training down, mm -hmm. right? And think about well who am I? Right. And how Show myself I'm not trying I'm not being anybody else I'm showing me right and I'm not showing the stereotypical me mm -hmm. I'm you know who Beatrice is who was that girl right because mm -hmm. I think that like us as being I think that was the hardest thing in the work is you know us being older that's right going, going back to your childhood and bringing that idea of who that girl was not who this woman is now but literally who was that girl and and bringing her back to life because when you bring it what was beautiful was when you bring that little girl back to life then you bring life into yourself now as a woman and i think that was one of a really beautiful thing that happened um when i joined in but b can you talk a little bit more because i like this idea starting with the beginnings you know back in 2014 you know with you and fauna and kat camille mormina and usha this was you know, the original six, um, talking about that process. And then we can kind of, you know, bring on the other players like, you know, Tanise and myself and, you know, uh, Maite, Malika, Aaliyah. Um, and I'm sure there's more, but, but can we, can you talk a little bit about the beginnings? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> The um the beginnings um again it was it was very much you know just investigating researching um just black girls and and black women you know mm -hmm. back in the day and then from there you know how do how do you now develop all of these j different gestures mm -hmm. right so Camille is all about like okay how do we continue on you know planting the seeds, right? So then um, how do we create these different gestures, create our in our own bubble, and then from there share it with, with everyone. And mm -hmm. then, so then from there, so she put myself and Fauna together. It was something that she saw that like, she was just like, these two somewhat, they have some kind of language that they understand. <laughs> right, question. So did you all know each other prior to you? Thing that we didn't. And Usha actually came a little later. Okay. Um, but we all didn't necessarily come. Uh, we also, Kat and I, we did. Mm -hmm. Kat, known each other since, since of course, like early days. Camille, I've known her since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. So th we, the three of us had like that type of relationship. At least I had a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. The other women in terms of Maura, Mina and um, um, Fana and Chanel, we didn't necessarily know each other. Well, I didn't know, necessarily know, know them. Okay new kind of like you know process for for me i would say um but it was one of those things as professional dancers you know you just go in okay learn learn whatever you have to do learn and the do thing, it and of course do it um with fauna and i we had that and this is us creating the the um the duet with of course camille's direction and is everything is, of course is choreographed right um so we started to develop these different um gestures with the direction of Camille. And um, it was one of those things that is like, you know, we had the wall mm -hmm. and we had this third wall. And it's like, how do we use these different gestures that we all learn from each other and now do it on this wall? Why? Right, right. Right. Then Camille was like, can, can you guys connect? Detach? Can you actually connect? And we were like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So then that's when we started to figure out how can we connect and stuff. So there was a lot of. 
um, push and pull um, that was like necessarily happening. And then all, you know, there was a lot of tension, but then of course, like, you know, figuring things out. That's right. That's exactly what we do as just women and, you know, as just yeah. women a sisterhood and black girls in general is just like okay let's figure it out and stuff there might be some tension but it's like no but i got you you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. right so all of the different things that were happening in rehearsal during the the development process mm -hmm. is came out in the in in the end product right yeah. and it um, read very clearly it read very very clearly yeah and then another thing is so we worked on we worked with um Three dramaturge, um, Talvin uh, uh, Wilkes, da uh, Daniel Banks, Camilla Forbes, um, and we were thinking about with with each section the different beats. Okay, and these different beats, right? So that way, everything is just not, you know, just just mm -hmm. fine, right? So how can these different beats, you know, read to the audience, read for ourselves? Mm -hmm. so, again, for like the second duet, the first thing is like, where are we? So okay. you. Know, we're thinking about instead of it being the steps, we're thinking about storytelling. Yes, right. It, it yeah, worked. very clear to the transition um, of setting setting a, a tone, setting the environment up, um, setting the different characterization up. Like it's very very different. It's different interaction. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and. The first thing is okay. Where are we? We're in a we're in a playground. Okay, what do we do in a playground? We play. We play, right? <laughs> um, a lot of the footwork um, came from one of the other um, reps that that um, Camille choreographed. Um, so then we just kind of like learned a lot some of the footwork and then we trans transformed it um, into a play. So that's yeah. to fit to fit the narrative of Black Girl Linguistic Play. Yeah. Right. And then um, hide and seek. What what do we you know usually do? Um, in the rehearsal process, it was also thinking about different hand games. One of the things that I realized that is that like because I'm Cuban American, a lot of the hand games like I knew in Spanish, but there was but but it was a similar rhythm to mm -hmm. you know, to other to other hand games that like other people all, all the other girls knew. So that was like a lot of so it was really cool just to like learn. You know what what Camille used to do, what Kat does, yeah. the similarities, and then you know, so we kind of like just like vibed off of each other. I was gonna say something. I yeah. I think it's one because you you know being Cuban American, um, but but still black, right? Isn't it interesting that you still knew these hand games? You know what I mean? It just shows the universal language of black codes of you know black language of culture you know and how how we're, we're created united and you know for me to even come in and know these games and i'm originally from st louis missouri cat is from washington dc um you know camille is from queens you know but all of us knowing these games right there may be a little tweak a different version but we know it and i think that's the yep. beauty of community cross pollination the power of community um and why i think that Black Girl Linguistic Play was such a triumph um, is because we had a narrative and a story to tell and praise and celebrate, you know, who we are as Black women, That's you know, right. whether we are, you know, born of slaves, whether, we, you know, we have, you know, Latin, you know, um, connection wherever we are you know what i mean it's, it, we just we understand each other and i think i think that's really beautiful yeah and i think that that's also what it is is to also show your vulnerability to because we are taught to be strong and that like strong woman and you need to you know wipe off those tears nope you gotta like continue going and going 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 and you know is one of the things of like showing us as you know crying on stage That's uh, right. you know just um really really attending to that and then also and one of the things that is a through line through in the piece is not necessarily letting your sister go That's right, right. Yeah. Camille, Camille and Katz they do a lot of this right mm -hmm. they you know have a lot of like gestures where they're just looking at each other eye contact you know and they get it the call and response right mm -hmm rhythms right mm -hmm. it's like you do this and then i go here and then right. you know, mm -hmm. that play that's happening right um 
with um with the duet there is that call and response to yeah. with tension right with always tension because it's a one-up right and the reason i was going to say we can talk about particularly our duet is because the what we're representing right we're representing you know an older sister and a younger sister or an older cousin and a young cousin who who you know have been together forever they do everything together but something's happening with this older one right because she's developing she's and she's developing into a young woman and now you know she's she's figuring out her body she's understanding her body she likes boys you know it's those type of things and then of course the little sister still wants to be a part of this world and unfortunately you know it's not her time yet yeah you know and but things happen with that you know it, it's not that it's a bad thing that it's not her time it's just it, it you know that's the time too as as women you know we can't be on the same plane all the time. You know, we're going through different journeys at different times. One is not better than the other. Exactly. It's just where we are. And I, and I think that's an important part that we should understand, like where we are as women and where we are in our journeys, just to support. And I feel like the older sister realized mm -hmm. what was happening mm -hmm. and needed to support her. You know what I mean? Not belittle her, not yeah. look down on her, not feel that she was superior, but support her through understanding that your time will come. Right. You know what I mean? Which I think that was very, very delicate. And um, and I think the storyline was, was clear with that. Yeah, I mean, and in that, you know, I thought about, like when I was younger, I didn't necessarily fit in. And mm -hmm. I, you know, um, dance was always, of course, my outlet, and that was my voice out, but I never really, like, fit into the popular group, or, like, you know, I was always trying to, and, and then I wasn't, I wasn't Latino, Latina enough, right, to the, to the Latin community. I wasn't, like, Black enough into the African-American community, but at the same time, I was also very much accepted there. So it was just one of those things of me growing up trying to figure out. I also had a big butt, you know, I was being teased, you know, because of that. So I was always trying to hide my butt, you know. Um, I had big feet, you know. So there's all these different insecurities that, like, you know, come up and mm -hmm. be you know like Camille always says who were you before the world told you who you were you yeah, know powerful. and powerful because it's so true you know it's like before anybody told you anything you were just chilling playing games and all this stuff you know and really enjoying yourself then all of a sudden you're being you know you're being teased you're being called this and this and that and all of a sudden you know um, um, you're starting to understand, oh, I do have this, I do have that. Oh, I guess that's, a, that's wrong for me to, 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 to have natural hair. You know, that's mm -hmm. wrong, like have a, have a big butt. That's wrong for me to have a nose that looks like this. You know what I mean? So, um, and that's when all of the different tensions that, and different insecurities that happen within us. But, you know, this piece, you know, kind of peeled all of that you know, just kind of healed all of that for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it, and we, of course, and in, in, we in rehearsals always have conversations, right? Yeah. Um, and you, Chloe, and us performing, it also has had many conversations about how we feel and things like that. So I think that this piece gave us an outlet to just heal, to also hear each other and mm -hmm. each other. It was more so like a, you know, therapy. And therapy. I think and I think that we as women and black women need to do that more often. You know, it's like, let's retrace back to our childhood. Let's retrace back of like how we felt because all these things are deep down inside that is still there mm -hmm. that needs to just kind of come out and like really, and that way we can lift each other. That's why there's a gesture that does this. And this is like, sis, lift you, lift, lift. Yeah, lift up, like chin up, chin up, chin up, lift up. Because you know that 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 is powerful. You know, chin up, lift up. I'm I'm here to support you. Um, and Fauna, I, the TV. I, when we were talking about you know the world telling us what is beautiful, what looks like, what we need to look like. Um, you know, there's a part where we're looking at TV, and of course, you know, something comes on. Let's say it's Janet or Beyonce or Madonna or somebody. But you know, it's very it's it's like it's um, hypersexual. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I I want to do that. You know, and and that still happens today. But that's also the world telling us what we're supposed to do, right? You know, we learn. We're learning from uh, the television. We're learning from YouTube, you know, these young people. So, you know, right. it's very important to know what we're putting out there and what's 
being put in our minds. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, my transition into the work um, and shout out to you and Fauna uh, for breaking all of that down. I just want to reiterate, everything is choreographed. If you ever think it's not, that <laughs> means we're doing a great job. Everything is choreographed. Yeah. So all of those little details um, are just superb. And I just remember like my head about to explode. I was just like, oh man. Um, but I just remember um, having my one-on-one. -on -one. So a lot of times when you're, you know, going into new works, um, you're learning it, someone's teaching it, but you also have your one-on-one -on -one with Camille. And, uh, you know, I had kind of like that fast, like fast speed process of getting into the work, right? Um, so all the things you talked about, like who, who, who is that? Let's say she's 12, like, you know, who are 13, who is that young 12, 13 year old? Who, who was Chloe then? And it's interesting because I'm, I'm not a big sister. I'm actually a little sister in real life. Um, and my sister and I got along most of the time. Um, but I, I was very adamant about not putting her down either. You know what I mean? And also not to say colorism was an issue, but you know, my sister and I uh, grew up in the 80s and colorism was a big thing in the black community, right? So, you know, all of those things. So I was just very adamant about like making sure my sister was okay. So it did take a lot <laughs> for me to be mean to you, be Like it was like, oh, but you know, you gotta tap into, you know, who, who that girl was. And the, what I tapped into was my competitiveness because I am competitive. And that's what we're all about. It's kind of like we're together, but yeah. It was very much like, no, 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 step behind me. No, 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 I'm first. And right. that was me. That was me. I, I, I'm a leader. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, right. But I just remember Camille, you know, tapping into it. And she was like, you know, you, you, ha you just have to find it, you know, because what is most important? Yes, the steps are there. But what are you digesting? Like, you know, what are you telling? What are you expressing? What is your therapy? What Using this vehicle, using this um, space and artistic work, to heal and grow and explore, you know? So I loved going back into that, particularly, I got a butt. I got a big old, big old butt, right? So growing up, I was very insecure about it. Very insecure because I just didn't want someone to look at me and my body. I wanted some, them to know me in my mind, right? But mm -hmm. that was what was interesting and always people talked about my butt. So I hid it all the time. Mm -hmm. Interesting, the, the, you know, the costume. And I'm also a dancer, right? And, you know, growing up, like you said, you know, body complex, right? Like, do I have the right body? And having a butt, you know, especially if you're doing European aesthetic, ain't, ain't the tea, right? So, you know, going into that world and actually having a moment where my 12-year-old, 13-year-old embraced that instead of pushed it away, that right. was part of my healing. You know what I mean? Because I pushed it away. I didn't like it. I didn't want to show it. I hate when people talked about it. But I had to embrace it. And I think that was part of my growth and um, loving my body, you know, because that's a that's another thing that is universal. You know, there in, in the in the black community, black women, you know, just loving our bodies. That's you right. Know, we come in all different shapes and sizes and, you know, big, small and in between big butt, big titties. It doesn't matter. But we just for us to learn that it's beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. for us to tell ourselves that it's beautiful. Nikki Giovanni said um, something on, um, uh, what is it, Girl Trek? And she said, you know, she, it was, I can't verbatimly say it, but she said, quit asking people who don't like you, are you beautiful? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. You had, like, and I think that was really great about us is that we were able to continue to say no you're beautiful chin up no you're gorgeous no your your hair is gorgeous B. Mm -hmm. like you know no i i love the 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 layers of you you know being latina and also being and also being black and also being raised here in america you know i i love that yeah and i i i think that's great um not just with us doing you know black girl linguistic play but i think that's great of having a space that Camille creates for her, for her, her company. You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, we're dancers, yes, but for her company, for her friends, you know, mm -hmm. for her artists, right? Because how many communities are there that we get to just be present and be seen and our narratives get to be told as accurately as this and being guided by the person whose narrative is the same, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. And I just also want to um, just give a shout out to Scott Patterson and Tracy um, Wilmworth, who were also the originators in, in the creation of the music. So that was wonderful. And the video is Justin and Robin. Yes, yes. And that goes, it's, it's like, you know, it, it continues, the, the family grows, you know, it started off, you know, an incubator with certain people, but over time, it just explores and it grows and each person brings their dynamic, you mm -hmm. know, um, identity to it and mm -hmm. I think I think it's wonderful yeah. so we have like one more one more minute um, do you want to say anything um, there's some questions here that okay. we're you Let's... know the wanna okay uh, I'm just scrolling <laughs> okay I'm glad you know how to do that you know I'm new to this I'm like very proud of myself for doing it live right now No, the music didn't come after. The music and the movement kind of work together. Am I correct? Because that's usually part of yeah. the process. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's kind of in this incubator together. The artists, the musicians, and everyone's feeding off of each other when it comes to creation, whether it be the music, whether it be the dynamic and the movement. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so you all post show care. How has this shifted uh, or growth your grew uh, grew your process? Wait, say it again. I missed it. Uh, what was you all post post show care? Ah, uh, oh, how, how did it shift? Um, I'm thinking that that's what it's saying. Um, yeah. Uh, how 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 was this shifted? You know, throughout the process, throughout your growth and process. Well, you know, I'll I'll share something if you don't mind, B, and then you yeah. can jump. I I know I know the ending of your solo and our duet is usually quite emotional, um, and uh, so that time of like when I'm connecting with you and I'm like I'm telling you I have it even after the show I check in with you um, because you know. We're, we're artists, yes, and, and but what makes this so beautiful is that we're vulnerable, so we do release, we do release, and whenever there are moments of, to, to release, everybody's there to uplift each other. Right. You know, we'll cry together, we'll wipe each other's tears, we talk, we have, um, we have Q and A's after the show as well. Um, but it is an emotional roller coaster. But I think the the gratitude that we receive from the audience, but also the the um, the care that we have within the company, you know, we we do check in with each other afterwards um, because we feel each other, and so many things happen. Um, I know Camille at times, you know, Camille fights like Camille will like dance through pain and all types of things, and so I think that just constantly, uh, constantly checking in with each other, but also affirming each other. I think we do that often. So it's not even just about post-show, it's about pre-show. And we're just constantly affirming each other. We could do it, you know, tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Two things. Um, I'm always checking to see who's in the audience, <laughs> what other Black girls are in the audience, you know, post-show, since we do have a Q&A, um, mm -hmm. just to see, like, who is in the community? Who is there? Who has who is listening and who sees themselves, you know, um, on stage and remembers those different things from childhood? Um, you know, so it's that's that's the whole point of the work, you know, for it to be yes a universal language, even though it is cultural culturally specific. Um, but for those black girls to be like, yes, I do see myself. I remember that. Yeah. You know, that is what touches my heart and that is what you know even though like our bodies are like you know but like that actually lifts you know lifts um me up yeah. um, last time that we performed this and you know they always say 35 plus is a thing so <laughs> post i have to do a lot of um meditation i have to do a lot of body conditioning i have to do a lot of you know just breathing um just because not only is this work um emotionally not you know emotional you know in so many different levels and joy mm -hmm. like that but you know you're putting yourself on stage but then at the same time you are being very much technically physical 
so, physical. You know, there's yeah. different layers that's happening. So it's one of those things that it's, you know, I have to definitely do all of um, my, 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 my cues of bodies, body conditions. <laughs> <laughs> do we have some more questions? Let's see. Oh, Eric. Hey, Eric. I first saw it at Red Cat here in LA during that, during the after show greet. There was a very young black girl in front of me to meet Camille. She was so in awe of Camille. It was wonderful to see how, Cam yeah, how Camille, yeah. So it's, you know, it's one of those things that that's basically what it's about. It's like touching those in the audience, especially those girls, because you don't see these things in the media. So, you mm -hmm. know. You know, one thing I wanted to add too, which I, I think, Camille did a wonderful job doing this. So if you all saw that there's, you know, the chalkboard and there's all the graphics behind it and shout out because, you know, that's art by us. <laughs> Everyone who's performed in, in Black Girl Linguistic Play has, has artwork up there. But also uh, post-show, Camille has a chalkboard for the audience to create their own board of um, images and words and affirmations that empower Black women. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that's always special. And when we're, sh when we are shared, um, through emails or whatever, what, uh, the different audiences are saying all over the country, you know, it's very inspiring and know that what we're doing, you know, of course is not, is not just for us, it's for everyone, you know, that we're, we're sharing cause we're artists. Um, but it's also empowering, you know, other black women, but not just black women, but other people in general, just to show more kindness to humanity, you know, and to be more open minded, less judgmental, um, less stereotypic, you know, and just like explore and learn the beauty of who we are as humans. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The question is, um, has this uh, uh, boards gone left like negative comments? Definitely. We have had after, uh, in post, uh, this is in the dialogue, you know, we have had people say different things, thought that I was, thought, thought that, that the chalk on stage that Camille, you know, has, that that was drugs. Drugs. Um, so there was definitely a lot of things and negative things that were um, were said um, because people thought that like me and Fauna were like at the, in the ghetto. This was like doing our duet. And, you know, so there was so, so many different negative comments and we were just kind of like, you don't see joy. You don't see girls. You don't see um, innocence in stage. You don't see play. That Those words are not necessarily coming at coming in your mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in your mind so yeah. um you know it's it's one of those things that we had to definitely let people know um but yeah at the same time you know let let people know that the chalk you know that's healing that's healing and you i know? think that that's why camille wanted uh wanted to create the set where there was the chalkboard behind there with these positive right. images you know, because in its first reincarnation, I don't think the chalkboard was there. But um, now that it's there and it has these images, these playful, innocent images, it's like, okay, now we're force feeding you. <laughs> right. But, you know, we're helping you, but you still have to open your mind and understand, you know, uh, trauma right. happens to all of us. Trauma is not the first thing that should come to mind when we think about a black woman, a black girl. Why can't we think about joy? Why can't we think about intelligence? Why can't we think about play? Why can't we think about innocence? And that was the reason why, you know, Camille once again created this work. Right. Because it's like, let us tell our narrative the yes. right way. Yeah. And Camille has a good way of challenging the audiences, right? And letting them know, like, why did you see that? Mm hmm not see yourself because you're seeing black girls on stage. Right. You know, so that was definitely a lot of things. Another thing is that um, just to, she was also inspired. So the, the work was inspired by, by Cara Gaunt's um, book, um, The Games Black Girls Play. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, B, I miss you. <laughs> I know, I miss you too. I miss you so much. Oh, but I enjoy this talk. I enjoyed seeing, you know, Black Girl Linguistic Play. And there's so many other renditions, you know, because we perform so many places, even at the Kennedy Center uh, when Ink premiered. 
Um, but stay tuned. There are so many talks that are going to be right here yes. on LA Brown Live. Uh, you'll you'll see us again next month. Um, Beatrice is teaching class. I'm going to teach a class. Yes. So we hope to see all of you back on here this week, next week, the week after, and the week after until you know this Rona leaves. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, and you know what? We're, we'll 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 come we'll come we'll come out, and we'll we'll dance all together and do something. But yeah, I thank you, Chloe. You're amazing, oh, and you. You, all of my CABD fam. Uh, yes, and thanks for so, this opportunity. That's right. Big heart to everybody. Yes. All right. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. Bye.